We'll admit it's comforting to think that serial killers only exist behind the screens and that our neighbors and families are totally innocent. But the fact remains that some serial killers are never found, and they could be lurking near you right this second. Before you get spooked out of your mind and decide to leave anonymous tips whenever you see your friends acting suspicious, let us dissect the most important serial killer in history and see what we can learn to protect us from a horrible death at the hands of a psycho. Yes, we're going to discover the identity of the Zodiac Killer. Let's get right into the story. Who exactly was the Zodiac Killer? He is famously known as the terror that California faced during the 60s and the 70s. The police are sure about five murders being linked to him, but in reality, he claimed to have killed 37 people in total. Yeah, he was scary. But wait until you hear the nitty-gritty details of his crimes. On December 20, 1968, bodies of 17- and 16-year-old David and Betty Lou were found on an abandoned road. They were both shot and David died on his way to the hospital, while Betty died at the crime scene. But humans have a slight tendency to forget dangers, so Darlene and Michael, the Zodiac's next victims, thought nothing of sitting in their cars just a few minutes away from the murder site of David and Betty Lou, at night, alone. Well, they were not bothered until the Zodiac approached them with a flashlight and shot them both. Darlene died on the spot, but Michael lived to tell the world who this monster was, or at least what he looked like. The killer was between 26 and 30 years old, white male who had a large build and curly brown hair. Let's understand one thing. The most magnetic part of the Zodiac Killer's story is he continued communication with the police and even the public. Just an hour after Michael was saved and gave the most generic description of a man possible, the police received a phone call from a male claiming to be the shooter and also the killer of David and Betty Lou. Of course, there was always the considered possibility of a dumb teenager pranking the police. This theory was proven wrong shortly after. On August 1, 1969, three newspapers, the San Francisco Examiner, the San Francisco Chronicles, and the Vallejo Times-Herald, all received the same handwritten letter. It chilled everyone to the bone. The letter stated, and we quote, to prove that I am the killer, I will state facts that only the police know. He proceeded to state shocking details that were never made public. They could have only been known by the culprit. The letter was signed by a mark that has been preserved by serial killer enthusiasts throughout the decades. A circle with two lines going through it at right angles to each other. This was a huge money-making baby for the three newspapers. But they had no choice about whether they could print the letters or not. The Zodiac Killer stated if he didn't see his name in these newspapers, he would throw a hissy fit and kill again. The letter also contained a couple of codes that were cracked later on and stated some truly horrifying things like, I like killing because it is so much fun. And man is the most dangerous animal. Well, we agree with the second sentence, but killing takes things two steps too far. The Zodiac Killer thoroughly unable to get a life, would strike again, this time in an almost comical manner. He stalked a couple, Cecilia and Brian, who were just trying to chill on a California lakeside. The Zodiac Killer emerged from behind some trees, wearing an execution-style hood. The only reason this sight was funny was because California had seen a few murders recently. Oh, and also, the man was carrying a gun, a knife, and a rope. He had also made the Zodiac mark on the bottom of his hood, lest the victims think they were murdered by a remotely sane person. Poor Cecilia died on sight, but the six-time stabbed Brian survived to repeat the same description that Michael had given before. Believe it or not, this was just the start. The murder train picked up its pace as California saw killings in plain sight. Amongst one of the murders, the police came to investigate and misidentified the suspect as being an African-American male. We were outraged as well, but it's hard to get shocked by the injustice constantly imposed on black males by the police. Like all acts of racism, this one had a disastrous effect as well. Two officers watched a man that perfectly fit the real descriptions of the Zodiac Killer and let him walk away to an abandoned park 
just because they were looking for an African-American male. This was actually mentioned by the Zodiac Killer himself, who said that he had seen two cops pull a goof. You know you've messed up when a killer has to comment on the consequences of institutionalized racism. The Zodiac Killer wasn't just a classic psychopath who secretly wanted to get caught. He was also a player. He literally converted crime scenes to look like games and even planted fake evidence to send cops on a wild goose chase around the town. And, of course, he loved to sit around and write letters to the public. In his next few letters, he actually claimed responsibility for more murders that occurred in California and included a cut-off bloody cloth that was from a victim's clothing and wrote so highly disturbing things like wanting to shoot up a school bus. Nowadays, it's fairly common to see shooters inside schools in the U.S. Could you think of a more unfortunate situation where we can't think of a killer waiting to murder kitties or something more horrifying than the present situation? The Zodiac Killer continued his letter parade in one of which he included a code that could lead to his name before sending the last one in 1974. He included that he had killed 37 people and further providing proof that he had exactly zero friends. Wrote a review on The Exorcist, calling it the best satirical piece he had ever seen. By now, you have probably understood the personality and workings of the most notorious killer in the world. So, we'll give you some suspects. The first is the most famous and seemingly accurate. In fact, we guarantee that you will say, how did no one arrest this man after we acquaint both of you? The prime suspect of the Zodiac Killer crimes was a man named Arthur Lee Allen, and he was presented as a suspect by a San Francisco Chronicles cartoonist, Robert Graysmith. Now hold on tight. Things are about to get a little more than crazy. After the same San Francisco Chronicles received letters from the Zodiac Killer, Graysmith became utterly obsessed with finding the man behind the endless gory letters. Graysmith dedicated more than 10 years of his life trying to find who this notorious killer was. We're really surprised he didn't lose his mind in the process, especially since evidence was so thin. He wrote two books called Zodiac and Zodiac Unmasked, both of which marked Arthur Lee Allen as the culprit. First, let us present the many, many reasons why Graysmith was probably right. Remember the murder of poor Cecilia and Brian, who was stabbed six times in the back when he just wanted to chill with his girl? On that same day, Arthur told his family that he was going scuba diving at, get this, the same lake that Brian and Cecilia were murdered. And add to that the fact that he came back thoroughly covered in blood and had a bloody knife in his back seat. Yeah, we're also convinced at this point, if you decide to give him a chance, let us present some more evidence against him. Two years later in 1971, one of Arthur's friends claimed that Arthur had called himself the Zodiac before the press received the second letter, which was the one that read, This is the Zodiac speaking as an Arthur referred to himself as the Zodiac even before the killer publicly claimed the name. There are two shocking points in this piece of evidence. One, obviously, that Arthur called himself the Zodiac before the killer did. And two, the alleged Zodiac killer had friends. Especially, as we were discovering, he was a guy who insisted his friends call him the Zodiac. The same friends also said that Arthur claimed he was going to literally hunt people with a gun and a flashlight attached to it. Okay, now at this point, we're kind of judging his friends too, because what kind of crowd invites that kind of a conversation? Wait, the Zodiac Killer might strike again, this time killing people with secondhand embarrassment. Anyways, evidence against Arthur doesn't stop there. He got a second interview with the police. You know, after they cleared his blood cupboard, returning from the lake charges. In this interview, he said that his favorite book is The Most Dangerous Game. This book is about, oh, guess what, hunting humans. And it was explicitly mentioned in the Zodiac Killer's first letter to the three major newspaper editors. And Arthur wore a watch that had the Zodiac Killer's mark engraved in it. The police thought that a thorough search of his trailer home was now heavily warranted. 
Here's a list of the totally normal things that were found. Small, dissected animals in a freezer, which were at least dead as a small mercy. Bloody knives. And one more thing we can't mention here, but comment below if you want to know, and we'll send you a direct message telling you what it was. In 1974, Arthur was arrested for child molestation. Did you remember? It was the same year that letters from the Zodiac Killer stopped coming. Needless to say, this alleged loser bragged about his killings while bunking with another convict, uh, Ralph Spinelli. Ralph claimed that Arthur had admitted to killing that was attributed to the Zodiac Killer. As the investigation progressed, Michael, who was the survivor of the Zodiac Killer and the one who had seen him without a mask, identified Arthur Lee Ellen in a lineup. Armed with a warrant, the police scoured Arthur's place once again and found some more totally normal objects, including plans on how to build a bomb, constructed bombs, and tapes about the Zodiac Killer. Now, why the emphasis on bombs? Well, after all, he could be a normal weirdo who just happened to like bombs. Well, remember when the Zodiac Killer said that he would love to shoot up some kitties on a school bus? He also included plans on how and where to plant bombs on said bus in his letter. Even with all of this information against Arthur, the police were not able to detain him, and he died, a free man, in 1992. But why did the police let him walk free? First of all, all of this overwhelming evidence is circumstantial. As in, yes, it could be related to the serial killer, but also Arthur could be your average small animal dissecting loser who just happened to admire the Zodiac Killer a lot. Second, there is some evidence that pointed against Arthur being the Zodiac Killer. His DNA was actually compared to the saliva on the letters, and it was not a match. Again, when they compared his fingerprints to the one at the crime scene, it was not a match, but it could have been fake. Planted evidence. His handwriting didn't present a match to the letters, and he did not look anything like the sketch made by the press. Still, Arthur Lee Allen is believed to be the Zodiac Killer by many people until this very day. That being said, we will present our second suspect, a man who was declared the Zodiac Killer by his own son, Earl Van Best Jr. The letters of his name fit the Zodiac Killer's code perfectly. He wrote a book called The Most Dangerous Animal of All, dedicated to his theory. And we have to say, Earl Van Best Jr. looks almost exactly like the Zodiac Killer's police sketch. His writing on his marriage certificate also matched the famous letters. But here is the evidence that points away from Earl Van Best Jr. being the Zodiac Killer. First of all, the writing on the marriage certificate was not Earl's. Second, his build was not heavy, nor was stocky, which was a unanimous description presented by the survivors. Third, his DNA was never tested against the saliva on the postcards on the basis of not enough evidence being presented. Gary Stewart said that this was a police cover-up. But why the police would cover up this, we don't know. With these three facts, ours and Gary's case against Earl falls apart. But we have one more trick or rather, one more suspect up our sleeves. This theory is presented by a retired police officer who thoroughly believed that Lawrence K., better known as Kane, was the Zodiac Killer. Here are the facts. Kane was involved in a car accident just a few years before the killing started. As a result of trauma, his behavior became bizarre. Psychologists claimed that Kane was losing the ability to control self-gratification. This means that he would do anything that brought him pleasure without an effort to control his desires. Imagine if we didn't control how many Cheetos and Netflix shows we consumed and replace those desires by possible perverse ones, you know, like uh, hunting humans. Additionally, the Zodiac second victim was stalked and harassed by Cain just a few weeks before she was killed. But the most convincing piece of evidence is yet to be presented. As confirmed by his letter, the Zodiac gave a ride to one Kathleen Jones and her baby. During the ride, he told her that he was going to kill her and ruined his plans like a comic villain. Kathleen jumped out and hid behind some trees with her baby. She later identified Kane as the man who had tried to kill her. 
The difference between her and the other survivors was that she had extended face time with the Zodiac. So, which one of these men do you think is the Zodiac Killer and why? Comment down below and we'll pin the best answer. This was Explained, bringing you the best and craziest content on the internet. See you next time.